Oke, okay, Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Uh, welcome back to SIG 2004 Sedimentology Part 1 Silicic Plastics. This is lecture number 2 for Silicic Plastics. We are still on the topic of sedimentary texture. In the in the previous lecture, we've talked about grain size, which is the first uh, textural property we need to know. Uh, today, we are still on the topic of grain sizes. I'm going to introduce you to an additional term in grain size. And this is sorting. In Malay, it is uh, isihan or pilihan, eh? how well sorted or your sediment size distribution is. Sorting is defined as the measure of the range of grain sizes present in a sediment sample. So let's say you've taken a sample of sediment from a certain location, you've brought it back to the lab, and you've already made a grain size distribution, let's say a frequency curve, right? You can actually determine the mean grain size, the modal grain size, and the median grain size, okay? Another thing you can do is look at the whole distribution. What is the range of grain sizes present in your sample? So, let's say this sample here. Okay. So, you can see it's a sand. You can see the grains. What was the range? In this case, you have the grains which are really fine grain, these small particles here, and they make up the bulk of your sediment. But you also have grains which are very much larger, like this one here. And also grains which are intermediate in size, perantaraan, tengah-tengah, in the middle, right? So in this case, you have a very wide range of grain sizes. So we say that the grain size is poorly sorted because of the wide range of grain sizes. In this other sample here, you see that, yes, you have lots of grain grains, but the size is roughly similar, right? No really big sam uh, grains, grains or no really f small grains in, in, in between. Okay, So we say that the sorting is good, well sorted. Okay, So uh, most of the time uh, for, for the field geologists, uh, you don't really have time to do a grain size analysis. Take, take a sample and bring it back to the lab and put it inside a sieve shaker, right? So we do a visual estimation. Let's say you are a geologist, you are in the field, uh, you have an exposure of sedimentary rock, and you want to determine the, the, the sorting. So what you have is this card. It's like, a, it's like the grain size card. But what you have is uh, are pictures showing you uh, sorting in visually, right? So very well sorted, the grains are about the same size. And then you have decreased sorting until you get to very poorly sorted here where you have very large grains mixed together with very small grains. So there's a degree to sorting. You're going from very well sorted to well sorted to moderate to poorly sorted to very poorly sorted. So these are verbal terms of sorting, right? You're not putting any numbers here. It's good enough for field work, but it's not really that accurate, right? So you can do this, estimate it visually, uh, observe it, the, the samples under hand lens, and then you compare it to a visual estimating chart. You can also use this for petrographic work. You have a thin section of sandstone, and you can determine the sorting visually right, by comparing it to this card. So to summarize, well-sorted sediment is where all the grains are roughly similar in size, but always in grain size. Now you can also express sorting mathematically, sorry, mathematic. So in, in, in statistics, what we mean by sorting is standard deviation. Okay. So to illustrate this, I have a normal distribution curve here. To, to as an example, uh, let's say you have a very perfect uh, normal distribution. 
when you once you plotted your let's say a, a sample sediment from a grain size analysis using sieves. Okay. So what is meant by standard deviation? One standard deviation covers about uh, approximately the central 68% of the area under your frequency curve. Okay, so you have the normal distribution here, and this area in the middle, in this case, this is 68.26% of the whole area below the curve. Okay, so this is one standard deviation. So sorting, uh, well, we talk, when we talk about sorting in geology, uh, we're, we're talking about how narrow or wide this 68.266% area coverage is. Sometimes the area is narrow below the curve, sometimes it's very wide. So very standard deviation. Okay. Um, you can calculate um, sorting or standard deviation in sedimentology using the graphic method of folk and ward. Okay. So from the curve, you can extract the different percentiles here. 84th percentile, 16th percentile, 95th percentile, and 5th percentile. And you put it inside the equation here. So you get a standard deviation. This is called the graphical method of calculating sorting, introduced by Folk and Ward, 1957. And from this equation, you are actually uh, calculating what is called inclusive graphic standard deviation. The worry we go into more detail during the practical. So uh, you plot your grain size distribution as a cumulative curve. This is arithmetic scale here again. So uh, you have cumulative weight percentage uh, getting higher and higher until you reach 100% here. And then you have your grain size as the horizontal axis in five units, yeah? So you're going closer towards the left, going finer towards the right. Your numbers becoming more and more positive, right? And from this, you get uh, yeah, you get the fifth percentile here and get the corresponding phi size. Do this for 16%, 50%, which is also the median, 84%, and 95%. And get the corresponding phi uh, value. Put it inside the uh, equation, so you get your sorting. Okay, so... In this table here, they're showing you two columns. One, uh, you have description of sorting using verbal terms. When we talk about sorting with other geologists, we say, oh, the sample is well sorted or the sample is fully sorted. Right? But they also have a corresponding value in terms of number right? if you're doing a statistical analysis. So, notice here, when once the sorting gets better, your standard deviation uh, gets lower, it decreases. And why is that? Well, remember, um, it, it, we, when talking about standard deviation, we're talking about 60% of the area coverage below the curve. So, if your grain size, grain size range is very narrow, right? so, yeah, you get a narrower... Um, you get a smaller number, right? Standard deviation. If it's your grain size range is wider below the curve, you get a larger number. Okay. Now this is simply the same um, slide as before, just with some illustrations here to help you visualize, right? So a wider range of grain sizes, right? So you get a higher number to your standard deviation. And this is going to be that 2.0 is very poorly sorted. And this is very well sorted at 0 0.35. And notice that the grain sizes are nearing to almost the same grain, grain size to, to all the of, of the sample, uh, all of the, of the grains here.
Okay, we are still on the topic of uh, uh, grain size sorting. You need to know two more terms. First is uh, skewness and also kurtosis. Okay, we'll go through this one by one. Okay, so in the example used to illustrate uh, sorting in the first slide, right? I showed you a nice, perfect, normal distribution. You have a bell curve, right? But in nature, you don't really get that. Yeah? Most natural sediments do not yield a perfect normal grain size distribution, not a perfect bell curve, but it is going to be asymmetrical. Okay? And this asymmetrical distribution is what we call a skewed distribution. And it can be, uh, can be, can be calculated as skewness. Okay? So we have two sediment samples here with two different uh, grain size distribution. Let's look at the top part first here. So grain size going from coarse to fine towards the right. And then you have frequency in terms of weight percentage. So the curve is asymmetrical. It's not a perfect bell curve. And the mode is towards the fine grain fat fraction. So most of your grains are actually fine grain here. But you also have a small amount of coarse grains, right? Represented by this coarse grain tail, we call it here. The echo of the So this is coarse grain tail. So if you find this kind of distribution, it is negative skew or coarse skew because you have a coarse grain tail. But most of the grains are um, fine grain. You can also have a uh, sediment this. Uh, grain size distribution which is the other way around where most of your grains are coarse and you have a fine grain tail going towards the right here so we call it positive or fine skew okay so these are asymmetrical distributions to your grain size no? not a perfect bell curve you can calculate skewness also using the graphic method of folk and ward okay? by using by trying to find uh, percentiles and the corresponding phi, unit, phi, phi values, right? Using a cumulative curve. So in this case, you need to find the 84th, 16th percentile, uh, 95th, 5th percentile, and also the median, huh? 50th percentile. Put it inside the equation, you get a value for graphic skewness. And here is another table just to show you uh, the verbal terms that you use for skewness, whether it's, it's finely skewed or very uh, strongly fine skewed, whether the curve is symmetrical, coarse skewed, or strongly coarse skewed. Okay, but yeah, and these are the, the numbers in terms of calculated skewness. Uh, the general the general rule is this: uh, if you have a higher deviation from zero. You get greater skewness. So in the middle here, 0 0.1 to negative 0 0.1, near to zero, right? You are in the middle. So you say that the you'll see that the grain size distribution, the curve will be nearly symmetrical. And further and further away from these values here, it, your curve becomes less and less symmetrical with a tail. Okay. So the next term you need to know for sorting is kurtosis. It is defined as the sharpness of a grain size frequency curve. So you have here three frequency curves overlain on top of each other. Can you between the end? So one of them here has a very sharp peak, right? So this kind of sharp peak distribution, we say it is leptocurtic. You have good sorting because a narrow range in the middle here, right? And the good sorting is in the center, central portion. So this is leptocurtic. But sometimes uh, you get a flat peak, like, like this curve here, right? So it's a wider distribution. You have poorer sorting in the central portion. And sometimes you get a normal distribution. In the middle, we call it mesocurtic. You can also calculate kurtosis using the graphic method, finding the 95th, 5th, 75th, and the 25th percentile. 
Now we know all these terms now for texture, um, grain size and sorting. Uh, we've come to the level where we can actually name our samples. Let's say you have a sample of sedimentary rock, or let's say you are standing in front of an outcrop and you have a sedimentary rock where you can actually observe the grain sizes, right? So you can give a name. Uh, take out your grain size comparator, use a hand lens, compare the, the pictures on the card with the sample here, and you determine, oh, my sample here is a medium grain sandstone, right? Is its name. And maybe you did an analysis, maybe you make a thin section back at the lab, and you look at the grain size distribution, and you can say that the sandstone is well sorted. And voila, you have a name. The geological name for my sample here is a well sorted medium grain sandstone. Okay, so that's it for uh, grain size sorting. Next up, we will talk about uh, grain morphology, which is also another textural property. Well, stop here first. Okay, so wait for, wait for. That's going to be part two, right? Okay, wait for part two of lecture number two after this. Bye-bye.